Hello, rock stars. I'm Coach Karen, and I'm so happy that you could join me today for our core based yoga class. Um, for your practice today, you will need maybe, you may need a couple of blocks just in case your arms are challenged like mine are in terms of the length and how far they, how close they can get to the floor. And otherwise, a yoga mat, enough space to move around in, and you're all set. So I invite you to join me on the mat in a seated position to begin. You could be seat seated right on your mat, or maybe because you may have some blocks handy, you could prop yourself up on your blocks so that you've got your hips a little bit higher. And Let's start, because this is a core-based class, I invite you to begin by focusing on your breath. So just follow the rhythm of your breath, noticing each exhale, and noticing each ex inhale. As you exhale, you may get a sense of the shoulders softening and dropping. As you inhale, you may feel the strength of your spine, you have your eyes open or closed here, just following your breath, bringing awareness to your breath and seeing if you can let go of anything else that's going on around you, whether it's uh, sounds from outside or within your home or just the tasks that you might have to do after your practice today. And let's place one hand on the belly and see if you can soften the belly so you can really notice how as you inhale, your belly expands as the expanding lungs gently move your abdominal organs out of the way. And then how as you exhale, your belly comes back towards your spine as the air leaves your lungs. So just following that movement a few times. And if you can, you can even see if you can Contract your core muscles, drawing them back in towards your spine on the exhale, and then let them soften and soften the pressure of your hand on your belly on the inhale. You might imagine the bellows of a blacksmith forge, if that helps, how when it's compressed, the air leaves the forge, and when it's expanded again, air comes into those bellows. So just taking a few more moments like that, bringing awareness to the core, and you could even let your hand rela hands relax on the mat beside you and see if you can continue to engage your core through your breath. And then coming back to your normal breath, and what I like to do sometimes as an experiment is just place the hand on the core and sit back a little bit. And you'll notice how your core engages as you tip backwards because basically it's a protective mechanism. Your body is trying to keep you from falling back so the core becomes engaged. So we'll revisit that in our practice today. For now, let's bring some movement into the neck just to soften up, relax the neck a little bit. Quite often when we focus on different postures, things that are new to us, we bring tension to the neck. So sweeping your chin across the collarbones from right to left and left to right. Moving gradually, maybe still keeping your core slightly engaged, but only if it's not too much to focus on. And then doing a complete circle with the chin or the nose. So drawing an imaginary circle with your nose or your chin, but being mindful to not let your head drop right back. And then we'll go the other way. Just doing a circle in the opposite direction, keeping your shoulders soft. And then returning back to a neutral position. I'm going to slip off of my yoga block now for our next movement. Just setting it aside. So bringing your hands to either side of your hips. We're going to lift the right arm up as we inhale. And then as we exhale, folding over to the left. So inhale, reaching tall with your right arm, and exhale as you fold. And I invite you as we continue to move dynamically here to engage the core on your exhale as you fold sideways, and then as you inhale, just letting it soften. We'll do that one more time here. So inhale, reaching up, and then folding over to the left, staying here for a couple of breaths. See if you can bring awareness 
to the engagement of the core. Remembering the core muscles aren't just those that are at the front of our belly. They wrap around the entire torso. So let's reach all the way up on an inhale, letting the right arm come back down and then on an inhale, lifting the left arm up and then exhaling to fold over to the right. Inhale, reaching tall with the left arm and exhaling as you fold. Inhale, reaching tall with the left arm, exhale, folding as you fold and exhale, engaging the core. And then one last time, and this time we'll stay tipped over to the right, engaging the core, maybe also trying to anchor your right left sits bone into the mat. And then reaching all the way up, lowering your arms. Let's roll the shoulders out a few times, just in case that's brought tension to your shoulders. And then going the other way. From here, let's bring the hands behind us for support, bringing the legs into a bent position in front of us. And let's do a little bit of cat-cow in this position. I'll turn sideways so you can see a little bit better. So as you inhale, really lengthening the spine, and then as you exhale, rounding your spine to the mat behind you, drawing your belly in towards your spine, tucking your chin into your collarbones. So inhale, really lengthening the spine and exhaling as you round your spine towards the mat behind you, also engaging the core. Each time you lengthen the spine, being mindful to not let the head tip back, just keeping the neck safe, and then exhaling to round. One more time. And then from here, I'll stay spacing this way so you can see a bit better. Let's try lifting one leg at a time. So keeping the calves and the shins parallel to the floor as we come into or prepare to come into boat pose. If you feel ready here, you could let both legs come up at the same time and then lower them back down. You could also continue with doing one leg at a time. Totally up to you. Make this your practice. And the next time you lift your legs, whether it's one or both, let's try staying for a little bit. See if you can draw the belly in towards the spine. Legs parallel or lower legs parallel to the floor. If you're doing one leg at a time, maybe switch now. And then let your legs, your feet rather, come back to the mat. So you're bringing your hands or your arms around your shins, really lengthening the spine here and then rounding it to the mat behind you. Lengthening and rounding. And one more time. Now let's explore that again. This time bringing the hands behind the thighs. Keeping a nice long spine here, and that requires engaging the core, as you'll recall when we try tipping back to see what happens there. And now we'll begin again with one leg at a time. Just alternating sides, and then if you feel ready for a bit more of a challenge, you could let both legs lift up, and then lower them back down. Letting your legs lift up, and lowering them back down. And then if you feel like you'd like a challenge here, you could try staying for a few breaths, either one leg at a time or both. If you want a bit more of a challenge, you can let your arms come out front, keeping the spine long. You could bring them out to the side. For a bigger challenge, over your head. And for the biggest challenge, straightening your legs. Totally up to you. Let's let the legs come back down hugging the knees in, your hands or your arms around your shin, lengthening the spine, and then rounding it to the mat behind you. And breathing in, nice long spine. Staying in that position, I'm just going to turn, side, turn around again so that I'm facing you. Still with my hands behind me for support. I'm going to cross the left leg over the right so that my left ankle is resting on my thigh. If this isn't available to you, you could keep your supporting legs straight. Once there, we'll rock a bit from side to side. You might notice that your foot either comes to the mat over on the right side, or maybe it doesn't. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're just lubricating the hips a little bit and still keeping the core engaged here so that we can notice the engagement of all of 
the abdominal muscles. And then we'll come to center and stay here for a few breaths, maybe bringing your supporting heel a bit closer to your hips or bringing your hips closer to your heel. You could rotate your ankle a few times one way and then the other. And then let's switch sides. Placing your right ankle on your left thigh, rocking a bit from side to side. And then when you next um, come back to center, staying there for a few breaths. Again, you could bring your heel closer to your hip if you'd like more of a stretch, but that totally depends on you and where you're at, of course. And then try rotating the ankle one way and then the other. Great. Let's uncross the leg, bringing both legs back to that bent position, the feet on the floor, your feet about hip width apart. And then from here, Let's bring both knees over to the right, bringing our weight off our hands. We're sitting a little bit taller. And let's add a little challenge here of bringing our hands over in the opposite direction of our knees. You'll notice we're using different core muscles here. So now to make it interesting, we're going to switch sides and go the opposite way. So my knees are now to the left and my arms are to the right. You could keep your hands behind you for support if you'd like. And then go back to that first side and to the second side and then back to center. Your hands again behind you for support. Lifting one foot or both off the mat. Let's see if we can bring our feet over to the left, to the right rather. So just a little bit of a twisted bridge or twisted um, boat pose, if you will. And then we'll come back to center and then same thing to the other side. And then releasing. Let's make our way onto into tabletop now. So placing your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees lined up underneath your hip bones. See if you can keep your neck in neutral spine so your gaze is down at your mat between your fingers somewhere. And let's come back to that focus on the core. So see if you can draw your belly in towards your spine on your exhale. And on your inhale, just feeling it relax, but keeping that flat spine here. You might think of Bree's blueberry spine here. So drawing your belly into your spine on the exhale, letting it soften on the inhale. And let's continue that engagement now while we move through cat-cow. So as you exhale, rounding your spine up to the ceiling, tucking your chin to your collarbones, drawing your belly in towards your spine. And as you inhale, arching your back towards the mat, drawing your shoulders back, your chest forward, gaze just near the front edge of your mat. So rounding into cat pose, drawing your belly into your spine, and inhale, arching your back. Arms stay relatively straight, but try not to lock out your elbows. We'll do that one more time here. And then from here, tucking your toes under, let's lift up into downward dog. So toes tucked under, lifting your knees off the mat, lifting your hips up to about where the wall and the ceiling meet, Keeping a bend in the knees and then lowering your knees back down to tabletop. To combine this with the breath, exhaling to press back into tabletop, drawing your belly, or into downward dog, sorry, drawing your belly into your spine and inhaling to lower the knees back to tabletop. We'll do that one more time, exhaling as you press back into downward dog and inhaling as you lower down to tabletop. And from here, let's take the right leg, straighten it out behind us, tucking the right toes under, pressing out through the right heel, feeling a bit of a stretch all the way up the back of the right leg through the calf muscles. And then if you'd like to add an extra challenge here, I invite you to let your left leg hover just above the mat. So take a breath or two here. And now let's lower the left knee to the mat. We'll switch sides. So bringing your left leg back out behind you, pressing out through the heel, tucking your left toes under, and then 
then maybe hovering your right knee and calf above the mat and your foot as well. And then lowering back down. From here, let's try that same thing with both legs. So tucking your toes under, hovering your knees just above the mat in your tabletop position. And from here, let's try pressing back into downward facing dog as you exhale. Inhale, lowering your knees to just above the mat. You could do one knee or you could do both. And then coming back into downward facing dog. We'll do that one more time, lowering the knees to just above the mat. And then pressing back into downward facing dog. And from here, let's extend the right heel up towards the ceiling, creating a nice long line from your arms all the way to your right heel. And then let's lower that foot and switch to the left leg, extending the left leg up behind you, pressing out through your left heel and then lowering your left foot. Let's walk to the front edge of our mat here, finding yourselves in a forward fold, letting your head relax, maybe cradling your elbows, rocking a bit from side to side keeping a slight bend in your knees. And then on your next inhale, sweeping your arms up towards the ceiling, bringing your hands, your palms together, and then bringing them in prayer pose to heart center. Good. Before we move through some sun salutations, I invite you to once again, bring that focus back to your breath while of course adjusting your pants, your top, whatever has shifted through all of that. So placing one hand on the belly again, I invite you to take a deep breath in, let the belly soften, noticing it expand, and then take an exhale. See if you can engage your core, maybe by applying pressure with your hands, maybe just using your core muscles. So inhale, really lengthening the spine, exhale, drawing the belly in towards the spine. So much like we did in our tabletop and in our seated position. And again here, if you're curious, try tipping back a little bit. You'll notice before your feet step back to rescue you that you definitely engage your core muscles. It's pretty cool. So coming to the front of your mat, placing your feet more or less underneath your hip bones, Having your blocks handy or cans or whatever you're using to lengthen your arms, just in case you need them, let's bring the hands to heart center. Inhaling here, reaching both arms up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, hinging at the hips, sweeping your arms towards the mat, folding forward, reaching towards the mat or onto the mat. On your next inhale, placing your hands either on your shins or on your thighs so that you can press against the legs to straighten the elbows, creating a nice long spine. And this could be an opportunity to engage the core. Exhale, sliding your hands back down your legs, coming into a forward fold. And from here, let's step the right foot back, tucking the toes under, lowering the right knee to the mat, untucking your toes, lifting up into a kneeling crescent lunge. Take a breath or two here, seeing again if you can engage the core, drawing the belly in towards the spine, just to protect the lower back, in case you've noticed that it's really arching forward. Try engaging through here. From here, letting both hands come back down to the mat on either side of your left foot, tucking your right toes under, lifting your right knee, stepping your left foot back to downward facing dog. From here, lowering your knees to the mat to tabletop, and then pressing back to downward facing dog. Right foot steps forward. If you need to, you can lower your left knee first, then bring your right foot forward. After that, of course, raising your left knee again. Left foot steps forward to meet the right, letting your head relax in a full forward fold, sweeping the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Hands in prayer as you come back to where you started. We'll do the same with the other side. Now inhale, reaching both arms up to the ceiling, 
As you exhale, hinging at the hips, folding forward, bringing your hands towards the mat, head relaxed. Inhale, placing your hands either on your thighs or your shins to really lengthen the spine. Exhaling, releasing both hands back to the mat, head relaxed. Left foot steps back, tucking the toes under, lowering your left knee to the mat, untucking your left toes, lifting your arms up into crescent lunge, kneeling lunge here, drawing your belly in towards your spine for stability. Both hands come back down to the mat, lifting your left knee, tucking your left toes under, stepping back with the right foot to come to downward facing dog, Inhaling to lower the knees to tabletop. Exhaling to bring the hips back to the heels in child's pose. Inhaling, coming back up to tabletop. Exhaling, tucking the toes under, coming back to downward facing dog, lifting the hips up towards the ceiling. Left foot will step forward here into your lunge. You may have to lower your right knee first, that's fine. Right foot steps forward to a forward fold, letting your head relax here. And then sweeping both arms all the way up to the ceiling and hands in prayer. So of course, we're going to add to that, incorporating elements that we've already visited. So inhale, reaching up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, hinging at your hips, folding forward, reaching towards the mat, coming into your flat back, Again, your hands could be on your thighs, they might be on your shins, they might even be on the floor. Exhaling, releasing back to a forward fold, right foot steps back into lunge. Here, you could either lower your right knee or if you feel stable, bringing your arms up, keeping your knee lifted. And you could have your arms out to the side for balance, it could be cactus arms. But again, see if you can stabilize the core to find stability in the pose. Pressing out through your right heel. Letting both hands come back down to either side of your left foot. Left foot steps back to downward facing dog. From here, lowering into tabletop, if you'd like, you could hover your knees just above the mat or lower them right back down. From here, we'll come right back to downward facing dog, pressing out through the heels, letting your hips come up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Right foot steps forward into a lunge. Left foot steps forward to meet the right head. Relax, forward folding here. Inhale, sweeping the arms up to the ceiling. Hands in prayer. Same thing to the other side. Inhale, reaching up to the ceiling. Exhaling, folding forward, letting your head relax. Inhaling to your flat back. Hands to shins, thighs, or to the mat. Exhaling, releasing your upper body into a full, relaxed forward fold. Left foot steps back into lunge, tucking your toes under. If you feel stable here, coming into a high lunge. Again, you could have your left knee down, arms wherever you feel comfortable, engaging the core, lowering your hands to either side of your right foot, stepping the right foot back to your downward facing dog. And now lowering to your tabletop. Your knees could be hovered or they could come right above, right onto the mat. Pressing back into downward facing dog. Left foot steps forward into your lunge. Nice long spine here. Right foot steps forward to meet the left, coming into a forward fold. Sweeping the arms all the way up to the ceiling. And from here, let's come into chair pose. Bringing your hands in front of you, taking a breath or two in chair pose, and reaching up to the ceiling, hands in prayer. Back to where we started. Let's make it spicier and add to that. Inhale, reaching up to the ceiling. Exhaling, folding forward. Inhaling, coming back up to a chair pose. From here, we're going to add a twist to our chair pose to engage other muscles of the core. So bringing your hands together, bringing your left elbow to your right knee to come into a twist. 
If this isn't available to you, you could place both hands on your right thigh. So whatever works for you. From here, coming back to center, lowering both hands to the mat, right foot steps back into lunge, tucking your right toes under, coming into your high lunge, arms either out to the side or overhead, pressing out through your right heel, both hands coming down to either side of your left foot, stepping your left foot back to reach down to downward dog. From here, let's once again lower the knees to hover just above the mat. Pressing back to downward facing dog. Let's lift the right heel now up to where, where the wall and the ceiling meet. Pressing out through the heel a nice long straight line from your fingertips to your heel. Engaging your core and then drawing the belly up towards the ceiling as you sweep your right foot forward to create space. If you need, you can lift your right hand slightly. Left foot steps forward to meet the right, relaxing into a forward fold, sweeping the arms up to the ceiling. We're going to return to our chair pose, hands in front. And now we're going to come into a posture called Drinking Bird. So bringing your hands back behind you, palms towards the ceiling. First try lifting one heel and then the other. And let's try staying here in our Drinking Bird for a few breaths. And then when you're ready to come out, the heels come down, the arms sweep up in front of you, reaching up towards the ceiling, hands in prayer. Beautiful. Inhale, reaching both arms up to the ceiling. Exhaling, folding forward, hands reaching towards the mat. Inhale, let's come back to that chair pose. This time we'll be bringing the right elbow to the left knee, twisting over to the left, or placing both hands on your thigh, your left thigh, if that's more available to you. Taking a couple of breaths here, and then reaching, coming back to center, sorry. Reaching all the way up. Exhale, folding forward, hinging at the hips. Left foot steps back, tucking the left toes under. If you feel stable here, coming into a high lunge, either with your knee lifted or raised. Hands wherever you feel most stable. Finding stability through your core, lowering both hands to either side of your foot, stepping your right foot back to meet the left to downward dog. Let's lower the knees to hover or bring them right down to the mat. And then coming back to your downward facing dog, pressing up through the hips. And now extending your left leg out behind you, pressing out through the heel. And then, as you prepare to sweep your left foot forward, see if you can draw your belly in towards your spine, and maybe lift onto your left fingertips a bit as you sweep your left foot forward to find yourselves in a lunge. Right foot steps forward to meet the left, letting your head relax here in a full forward fold. And then let's come up into our chair pose again. A breath or two here in your chair pose. And now let's come back to exploring drinking birds. So bringing your hands behind you, your palms up, maybe lifting one heel or both off the mat. I don't know how the drinking bird would continue from here. Maybe it would be dipping its beak down and back up into the water. I'm not gonna contemplate that right now. Okay, when you're ready to come out, lowering your heels, sweeping your arms up to the ceiling, bringing your hands together in prayer so that they find that you find yourselves at heart center. All right, we'll add to that. Inhale, reaching all the way up. Exhaling into chair pose. Take a breath or two in chair pose. Lowering your hands to the mat, straightening your legs somewhat. 
right foot steps back, tucking the toes under. From here, bringing both hands up to come into your high crescent lunge or keeping your knee down to a low crescent lunge. And now we'll add a twist just to engage some core muscles. So bringing your palms together and then bringing your right elbow to your left thigh, looking over to your left. You could also bring both hands to your left thigh if that's more available to you. See if you can engage the core here. Press out through your right heel. When you feel ready to come back out, coming back to center, arms either overhead or out to your sides. Lowering both hands to the mat on either side of your left foot. Left foot steps back to downward facing dog. From here, let's lift the right heel up towards the ceiling and we'll come down into a plank pose. You could have your heel lifted, your foot lifted still, or you could lower it back down. We'll step back, press back into downward facing dog, still with the right heel lifted, and then drawing your belly into your spine, coming up onto your tips of your toes, sweeping your right foot forward into lunge. Left foot comes forward to a forward fold, head relaxed, sweeping both arms up towards the ceiling. Oh, I forgot drinking bird, didn't I? So let's come into chair pose, bringing your hands back behind you, palms up, lifting your heels, finding yourselves in your drinking bird, and then sweeping both arms up to the ceiling, hands in prayer. Inhale to reach up to the ceiling, Exhaling into chair pose. Inhale here, exhaling, releasing both hands to the mat, finding yourself in a forward fold. Stepping your left foot back into lunge. Either with your knee down or up, coming into a high crescent lunge. Bringing your hands to prayer left elbow to the right knee or both hands to your right thigh whichever is more available to you you can have your left knee on the mat as well take a few breaths here beautiful and then coming back to center raising your arms to wherever is comfortable lowering both hands to the mat stepping your right foot back to downward facing dog Let's pedal it out here a few times. Bending one knee and then the other. And then lifting your left heel up towards the ceiling, creating a nice long line from your heel all the way to your wrists. And then lowering into a full or a kneeling plank, of course. And then coming back up with that heel, sweeping your left foot forward to between your hands, right foot steps forward to a forward fold, sweeping all the way up, and then lowering into your chair pose, and then palms up behind you, lifting your heels, guiding yourselves in drinking bird. bird. This would be one to try while bobbing for apples. <laughs> and then both arms coming back up hands in prayer. So we'll do one final sun salutation from here and we're going to add a hop to come forward. So just join me through our sequence. Inhale reaching all the way up. Exhale hinging at the hips as you fold forward and reach your hands to the mat. Inhale placing your hands on your shins or your thighs to flat back. Exhaling, releasing both hands to the mat. Right foot steps forward into lunge. This is where your blocks could come in handy, of course. Pressing out through your right heel. Left foot steps back to downward facing dog. Let's lower the knees to just above, above the mat to hover, or you can bring them right onto the mat. And then pressing back into downward facing dog. 
So here's where the fun begins. To hop forward, you're going to want to bend in the knees, and then you'll also want to look to where you hope your feet will land. So get your legs spring-loaded here. Look forward to where you hope your feet will land, and then when you're ready, hop or thud forward, finding yourselves in a forward fold. Reaching all the way up to the ceiling, bringing your hands together to heart center. And of course, you have to do this one more time, I think. So reaching all the way up to the ceiling with your hands as you inhale. As you exhale, hinging at the hips, sweeping your hands towards the mat, letting your head relax. Inhale, placing your hands on your shins or your thighs, straightening the elbows, coming into a flat back, shoulders back, chest forward. Exhaling, releasing both hands back down to the mat. Let's step the right foot back, tucking the toes under, coming into lunge. Take a breath or two here and lunge, really finding a nice long, clean line from the top of your head all the way out through your left heel, drawing your belly in towards your spine. Right foot steps back to downward facing dog. And now preparing to spring load yourselves to that hop forward, bending the knees, looking to where you hope to land, getting those hips lifted as you hop forward. I did it a bit more quietly this time, yay. And then reaching all the way up and hands in prayer. Beautiful. Let's sit back a little bit shake things out a bit, maybe sway the body a bit from side to side. And let's rotate the wrists a few times. We've done a lot of work with placing our weight on our hands and our wrists. So going one way and then the other, giving your arms a good shake. And let's just step wide here turning your feet out somewhat, and then bending at the knees so you're in a semi-squat and then straightening again. Bending at the knees and straightening. This time as you bend at the knees, take a moment here, drawing the belly in towards the spine, just finding stability through your core. And then bringing your hands behind your head, seeing if you can draw your elbows back while also still engaging through the core. And now let's lower the elbows over to the right. And then come back to center and then lowering the elbows over to the left. Come back to center. Elbows to the left, to the right rather. Back to center. And to the left. And back to center. This reminds me a bit of that um, one core move that we're, what's it called? Dancing elf <laughs> that you see in some of our RYL workouts. And now let's stay over to the right for a few breaths, seeing if you can keep the plane of your body as though you were squished between two walls. And then once more to the other side, staying for a couple of breaths. Drawing your belly in towards your spine. And back to center. Lowering your arms, straightening your legs. Roll the shoulders a few times here. Let's go one way with each shoulder, to one shoulder at a time rather. And then rocking them forward. Beautiful. Let's end our practice seated again. Just as we started, if you find it more comfortable, of course, you could sit on a block or maybe you have a cushion handy. Letting your hands come to rest wherever you feel most comfortable. And let's come back to observing the breath. You can let go of that engaging the core on your exhale now. This is more the time to slow down and relax, a sort of seated shavasana, if you will. 
If you're comfortable doing so, I invite you to close your eyes. And just noticing the strength in your body, the strength in your muscles, maybe that sense of fatigue, but also of satisfaction of having taken the time for your practice today. Noticing the sensation of each inhale, feeling your spine grow taller. And that sense of the exhale, that sense of releasing and letting go, softening with each exhale. Take a few more breaths like that. Breaths of appreciation and gratitude. Think about how your practice went today. And if there was any judgment or any expectations, I invite you to let go of those and just feel gratitude for yourselves for making time in your practice today. I'm Coach Karen and I'm so happy you could join me for our yoga practice today. This yoga class, along with all of the other workouts that are on the blog, can be found on the Rock Your Life website, which is an online home workout studio for women. You'll find me and a host of amazing coaches on the website, and I really hope to see you there.